guys and welcome i'm john and this is unique board gaming terrain the last video um the crystal structure i really enjoyed that it's absolutely standing there just been sealed it was absolutely fantastic so i've got this other piece okay so if you saw that video you know you know this isn't this piece here is not from the can of expanding foam okay it's not from that this is from a previous can it's an expanding foam, but it's from a previous can of expanding foam. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to show you how to turn this into a hill. Okay. Some of you are going to go, no, it's simple. Oh. This is just floating around doing nothing. I keep moving it from place to place to place. It's in my way. Okay. There are a few more bits here of expanding foam from that, from that can that we still to work on. But this is quick and easy. And when I showed you the crystal video, Okay, the last video. Some of the techniques that you use on the other piece of this to put the crystals onto, you're gonna use the same one here. So you're gonna trim it down, sand it, sculpt the top. Okay, so those of you who are new to the channel, guys, welcome. Sit back and enjoy. Check out some of the other videos because I'm sure there'll be some some there you like. Those of you my regulars, guys, we're getting there. I'm getting there with your help. This is absolutely fantastic. I, I enjoy doing this. I'm loving it. And I'm, I'm getting comments from people um, on the channel. They send me comments and, you know, that's I actually love it when I see a comment. I go, okay, let me respond to that. I love it when my phone bings and I, there's a someone on a messenger, so someone saying to me, look, how do I do this or how do I do that? And I have to put it into the weekly Wednesday. So, guys, please sit back, enjoy, and I'll see you in a second. Guys, so here we go. One quick thing I'm going to say. If you can't get yourself a cutting mat, okay? Now, I could cover this in the Wiki Wednesday, but I'm not going to, I'm going to mention it now. If you can't get yourself a cutting mat, you literally can get them from anywhere, okay? Anywhere. Well, not anywhere, but you can get them from pretty much anywhere. What I've got here, now this piece I use here, is just a thick piece of MDF, okay? Now, what I've done with this is, I gave it a varnish, both sides and the edges. So it's not going to get mouldy, it's not going to get anything like that. And then I put it down, and if I lift it up, you can, see the, can you see all the score marks into it? Yeah? Now this is handy because I can move it to anywhere I need it. So instead of me cutting on the weather board, and damaging the weather board, I'm going to just do it straight on here. And I had the blade to this time, rather than having the blade over there. <laughs> but I saw what you do. Okay, there's a top, there's a bottom. You want to trim, because it doesn't sit flat. Okay, you see it doesn't sit flat. I'm going to trim the bottom. Now, I keep, extend the blade out as far as you can, yeah? It's easier to cut. But I keep saying, forgetting to say to you guys, always be careful when you're working with a knife. One thing you should do, two things you should do. When you're not using it, put the blade away. Okay, I might have mentioned that before, I'm not sure. Put it down, out of the way. Okay, if you've got the blade hanging out and you end up whacking it, you're going to cut yourself. The other thing is, if you think you're going to be using a knife and there's a chance someone's going to come disturb you, let them know you're using a knife. You're carving and you're using a knife. Some people go, oh, what's, what's the point in that? You could be cutting away in your own little world and someone comes on, touches you on the shoulder and scares the life out of you and you stab yourself or you stab them. Okay, so just, if you're using a knife and you think someone might disturb me, let them know. I'm over in the workshop here. If my wife comes over to give me a shout, she won't turn up here and start talking to me, she'll call out from across the yard. Okay, so I'm not gonna get a fright when she comes in here, you know, in case I'm using a knife. So safety first, guys. Right, where are we, you can see me. So we're gonna do a little trim down. I keep talking when I'm cutting, I should just cut and then talk. So bear with me a second, guys.
So now it's sitting. It's still not perfectly flat, but that's sound. We got a fine grit paper. <laughs> I'm laughing because the last time, last video, I had half a sheet. And I said, oh, you're better off doing it with a full sheet. And I still forgot to get fine grit sandpaper. So what you're going to do is you're going to give it a gentle sand down. Now, if you've got a full sheet, okay, just imagine there's a full sheet here. All you're going to do is put that on and just turn it around like this. Okay, and what that does is that sands it right down. So it's almost flat. And that's all I'm going to do with this. So give me a second. a lot better now you can sand it down a little bit more but i'm not going to because i want there to be a few points of contact like here yeah so when i glue it to a base i've only got a little bit of filament around the top now so that's where we're at so we've got this horrible sh stuff on top nice flat underneath yeah again it's not 100 percent underneath flat but it's it's flat enough okay so what we're going to do with the top, how are we going to turn that into a heel? Well, the easiest way to turn it into a heel is get it and just cut it. Like with most things on this channel, you do not throw this away, okay? You think, oh, what the hell is that going to be used for? You could make that with a little pile of rubble, yeah? Just grab this plate. Okay, look, you can already see how that would look nice as a, a pile of rubble, okay? So you keep hold of that. If it, if it works out, it's no good, you don't want it, then throw it away. It's cost you nothing just to put this one aside, okay? So now this is what we have. Oh, it still looks a bit, I don't know, John. So, what you got to look at here, yeah, you've got a nice flat area to put your flocks and stuff, but it's not flat. If you put models and cannons and stuff on there, they're going to fall over. So you want to try and make this a bit flatter, but it still can be a little slope, okay, but it just can't be a proper angle. It has to be nice, nice and as flat as possible. Again, we do. We get a bit of fine grit sandpaper, and we just give the top a little sand. Not not too hard. The idea with the top is just to try and get rid of any flappy bits. Okay. So now we've got this weird looking structure. Now what we need to do? We need to come to the sides and start trimming the sides and, and carving the sides a little bit. Now. There's, you can carve in at an angle, okay? And I'll do that now and show you. You can carve bits like that out, okay? All the way along. And then when you fill and mix that, it's gonna look nice. Especially when you start, uh, you put under spray on and you start putting different colors on, different washes on. I've got a blade out, so I'm talking to you with a blade hanging out, so anyway, sorry guys. Um, it will give you different shades in the gaps, especially when you flock it. If bits of flock fall into there, it's going to look nice. So give that a little bit here and there. See in this bit here, okay, it's all bubbly and it's a lot. When I come to fill and mix that, now, if I was doing it now, 
there's too many little little bits for me to get my fingers into. And if I took a lolly stick, it's still going to be hard to get into the little bits and pieces. So what I'm going to do there is I'm going to cut a V into it so it's easier for me to fill a mix. Now, I've got too much of a gap. So what I'm going to do, so I'm using a knife as a pointer, but what I'm going to do is cut this bit here. Okay. Now, wait. It's gas because normally I just put the knife down and everything else. They give you the little health and safety warning and I'm holding it in my hand with a blade and I don't know. <laughs> now, let's have a look. See that? To this side. Okay. So now we've got a nice looking sort of hill. Might give this a little dug out here. Still think oh, it looks a bit, I don't know, but trust me, I've done this with smaller pieces and it's worked out fine. Now, all these bits that you've carved out, some of them are good, some of them are rubbish. These little bits, no good. This little piece, yeah, could be okay, it's a nice little on a base. Some of these wedges, again, could be nice. Some of them are crap, some of them are okay. So, the little tiny pipsqueak bits get rid of. But the sort of wedge pieces you want to keep hold of them okay because they they make nice bits of rubble on you can even use them on, on a model space a base for models you know just a bit of rubble there so now look what we've got it's looking fine what i'm going to do now is give it all a gentle sand down i'm not going to film doing that because you don't need to see me doing that then i'm going to cut a base and build a base for it now Again, I don't need to show you that, I've shown it before, but if you do want to see that or have a question to do with that, chuck it below and I'll go through it again and show you. Once it's been, once the base has been cut and it's been put onto the base, I'm probably going to go with hot glue because it's a, a lot easier, but you can PVA glue it. Now, if you PVA glue it, do not get tempted to put weight on top of it, okay? The reason why is you'll put the weight on it and you'll put in pressure on one point and it'll make the, the base like a bow, okay? Um, yeah, here's a prime example. This is a piece of expanding foam that I did before, and I used the weather board, uh, not weather, the mount board, which is like one mil compressed card. But this is all warped. Okay, turn it, let me turn it this way. You see, it's just, it's not sitting flat, it's all warped and it's not. Okay, now this is, this is one job that I have. It's going to be a hill as well, actually. I don't know why I just didn't use this piece, but it's going to be a heel as well. But this is one piece that I'm going to do a repair job on when I get a chance. Um, so for the minute, it's just tucked up over here at the way, ready for me to work away on. When I'm, the expanding foam is fine, it's not, nothing's going to happen to that. It's just the board that's a bit iffy. So I'm going to sand this, I'm going to base it, I'm going to then fill and mix it all. Okay? Again, you don't need to see me base it or fill and mix it, but if you do, or have a question, check it below and I'll show you. Right guys, so I'll come back to you when it's all fully mixed, under sprayed, and you'll start seeing me, I'm putting in base color, but you'll, you'll get your gist anyway. So see you in a second guys. Right guys, hammer down rain. Absolutely horrible day out there. Right, so here we are. Now, you'll say, John, but there's no base colors down. Because for the base, I actually thought, well, it's, in a, it's a heel. So most battlefields are grassy and then, you know, you have hills and stuff. If you're going to have, if you're on a desert plain or something like that, then obviously you'd cover this in sand and do it, you know. But my, my board is covering like grass. So even if I'm playing and it's going to be like a, it's all terrain with all the, you know, the usual bits of pieces I do, it doesn't matter because that's just, I don't care. I play the game, there's the board, there's the game, there's the terrain, off you go. But some people like to have, sandy terrain if they're playing on desert board or 
if they're playing like on a, a moon type scape, they like to have terrain that sort of colour. You know, it, this is not for you to do it like this, I don't care. This is this is how you do this. So you at any point of this you can deviate away from what I'm showing you and do your own colours. Now so for me, I'm actually gonna flop the whole base. Okay. So what I've done is I've airbrushed black on here around the edge. I'm going to dry brush it now. Now I'm just gonna go straight with a space wall gray dry brush. Just uh instead of doing the, the base colour and then just I want to show you something a little bit different. Okay, so it's just a, a gentle black dry brush, uh airbrush, sorry, and then straight into space wall's gray. Now with the black airbrush on top of the white uh expand the filler mix, sorry. I'm all over the place at the moment. With the filler mix, it's when you put the black air spray on the airbrush onto it, it sort of goes a grey colour. So it gives you the, the, the basic effect straight away. Of course, then when you're dry brushing the space walls grey or a very light grey onto it, it's just going to make it pop out a little bit more. And not only that, if you put this, if I put this up against other pieces of terrain that I've made, with all the colour schemes I usually go with, it's going to stand out a bit, but not too much. But if you're standing looking at different rock faces, they're going to be similar, but slightly different, you know? So that's what you want to go for. That's what we're going for here. Bring this up so you can see it. You see how that's already looking? Okay. You can see the blue. It's just it's simple, something simple, save you a bit of time, but it's at the same time, so I don't save you time because you still have to airbrush it. But the airbrush is, you know, those of you that have used an airbrush, you know how quick and simple that is. Those of you, like myself, that are just learning airbrushing, it's a good little bit of way of practicing. Not only that, you also can get a simple color scheme without very much of an effort. Now of course, once this dry brush is dried, you can actually go over the top of it with like a screaming skull or another color and dry brush it the opposite way, just to give you a bit more different, you know, shading here and there. Grace, I need to find. I need to find an alternative. If anyone knows a light grey alternative to this, whether it be Games Workshop, whether it be you know, and other companies, check on below and let me know because I need to get another one. Every time I go to GW, those of you that go to Model Shop will know what I mean by this. You go in there, you go. I've come in to get, oh, I don't know, I'll have that, that, that. And you just go, and then you go, oh, I need this. <laughs> Such is the way. Get my face over so it doesn't zoom in on me. Okay, now you can see this bit in here looks a bit weird. 
but that's all right. You just get a bit more of a dry brush in there. Okay. I said you could with these cutout bits. Okay, you could actually go across with uh, a dry brush with another colour, another light colour, or you could do it with a dark colour to so contrast the grey. It's you know really not an issue. You could even dry brush it with three or four or five colours if you want to. You know, it's just depends on how far you want to go. There was a, a video where I was talking about basing. And in that basin, I said un black undercoat and then uh, steel leaves and drab. And then you can dry brush it with Bane Blade Brown, and, you know, just to give you a different. And you can even add Screamer Skull to that. that. The same concept for that, you can do for this. So you can just keep dry brushing it, keep dry brushing it, you know, but don't go too mad because sometimes too much is, is too much. All right. Let's go on to the messiest part. Shut the way. Flocking. First thing you need is put a newspaper down. Make sure the newspaper doesn't have any holes in it. Okay. Why, why are you doing that? You're asking. Because when you flock it, any flock that's excess when you tip it, you've got it on a paper. You just put the paper together and pour it into a, a mixed flock bag. And now I need to go there and get my flock. So what I'm going to do is go camera for two minutes. Grab all the bits and pieces I need because in a rush. I'll see you in a second, guys. All right, guys. Let me come start jumping. PVA glue. What we're going to do? We're going to pour it. Actually, we're going to put some plimps underneath. I just thought about this because if I put PVA glue on it and it runs off the board onto the paper, it's going to stick the two together. I don't want that. At least with the plimps, then it lifts it up, so it's not going to stick to anything. Right. Now we're going to PVA glue the top. Don't be shy with it. All right. PVA glue the base. Again, don't be shy. Put some down. To hang because we might need that again. Helps if I have a good blowing stick, doesn't it? Rather than one that's covered in filler. Uh, where are we? No. End of the table. Two secs. You think I'd be organised by this point, wouldn't you? Okay, so take the lolly stick and you just want to spread this all this PVA glue out as much as you can. If it runs down, there's a bit here that's run down into the side there. Does it not a big issue? Okay, because when you flock it, it's gonna just look like a block climbing up the side of the cliff. Even though it's not close to the hilltop. Now some people are gonna say, Oh right, John, but how you how, if you've got troops up there, how are you supposed to get your how's your enemy supposed to get to you? Yeah. Guys you look at some hills, you know, look at historical battles and stuff, some hills, some hills like will look like this. And they have cannons in it, and the troops still manage to get up there. So you don't need to worry about that. I mean, you can make a little walkway if you really, really wanted to, but you don't have to. It's get a little eight-legged bio bio fiend spider. Right, uh, let's get in there. You're going to say, well, why did you fill and mix the base if you're going to flock it all? Because when you're at that stage of fill and mixing it, you have your bits left in your finger, just rub it off. It gives it texture anyway, but you could get to a point where you decide you're not going to flock the base and you're going to put some gravel on here or there, or you're going to put some sand on, or you're going to just, you are going to flock it, but you're not going to flock the whole thing. You're going to flock bits of it. Some more PVA glue.
little bit in there. Just try and push it in as much as you can, as far as you can, to the edge, edge of the board, and edge in there as much as you can, yeah? They're gonna be bits that you can't get to, or you, even if you can get to it with the PVA glue, you cannot get to it with the flock. When you get to those pieces, what we do is we get a bit of flock, we push it in, okay? It's not the best way of doing it, but it's, it's a way of doing it. I mean, I prefer the sieve in it, which you're gonna see in a second. I'm painting a little bit on my stick because I want to get in here under here. That's why rather than trying to steal it from somewhere else to put it on there, it's gonna straight from the tub. Easy as that, guys. The thing you got to remember as well: once you've um, once you've flocked it, and that flock is uh, you starting to dry, you're going to seed it afterwards. So you're going to you're going to spray it with your seeding spray anyway. You know, so when you spray your seeding spray, any bits of flock that are still sitting on there, they're going to stick, so you're winning either way. Now how do I flock it? I did cover this in another video, uh, a hill video made from polystyrene. I think that was a while back. Right, so you want a sieve. Now, what I do, let's sit down for a second. What I do, I get clump foliage, okay? And I push that through the sieve first of all, and the whole idea is to give it a light dusting. Yeah, now this does take a long time. And then I go with two more stack grass. Now you can go with four mil if you want to. Obviously the four mil is gonna be bigger. And another thing when you're doing flocks, always have one that's a mixed flock. So what does that mean? I'm using clump foliage, can say I'm using two mil. So when I tip this piece onto the paper, it's going to be mixed up. I'm not going to go through and separate each piece out and, oh, that's this, that's that. I pour the whole lot into the mixed flock. So when I put this on, I go with the two mil afterwards. And then after that, I go for the mixed flock. And what that does is, and it gives you different, different heights on the grass and different textures in the grass. So what I'm going to do, guys, I'm going to go... No, actually, I'm going to I'm going to start. I'm going to show you a bit of this, and then I'm going to go off camera and do the rest because this is a very time-consuming process. So you get your uh, clump foliage, pour it in, okay? And literally just sieve it into it, just push it through, and you do get finger ache from this. It does ache your fingers because your fingers are locked in the same position. Now, some people will just go, oh, let me just dump the clump foliage on there. No, that's okay. That's okay. I just find that the clump foliage doesn't give, um, doesn't break into small enough pieces. 
okay so i'm just going to do this this sort of corner here and i'm going to show you close up so you know what i'm talking about and then we'll go i'll go off camera and do the rest See this corner here? Yeah, that's what you want to do with the cunt foliage all over. Okay, then you put the, the two mil on afterwards and then you go with a mixed flock. Or you go with mixed flock first and two mil. Doesn't matter which way because the, the mixed flock is going to be two mil and the clump foliage together. And when you, yeah. So, guys, I'm going to crack on with this off camera and I'll come back to you when it's done. Okay. Right, guys. Now, you're going to say to me, you can see the white down here, yeah? I can't get in there with a the sieve. So the best way to do that is get as close as I can and try and build up a like a little level. And yeah, so along here, I don't know if you pick up on the camera, but it's like a little snow drift. It's the best way to explain it, but with a flock. So what you do is just keep going into it as much as you can just to build it up. Because then what we do, I tip it. And that will make all the flock all the loose flock fall in. Okay. okay, so the first thing we do is tip it this way, give it a gentle tap, right, so you can see in that bottom corner there, okay, I can't get into this, so what I do now, I take, I scoop my fingers around on the paper to gather up the block and sprinkle that in there. Okay, sprinkle that in, push it in if you have to. Try not to touch um, the PVA glue because obviously you're trying to sprinkle this in there, you're touching the PVA glue, you're going to have glue everywhere. Now, along here as well, I couldn't sieve it in. Let me get closer so you can see. So what I've done is I pushed the, the bits of flock in there. So we're putting that in there, some grass. And what you want to do is give it a gentle spin round, have a look. Looks okay, looks good, yeah, yeah. What I'm going to do with this, I'm going to leave this to dry, okay? I'm going to give you a couple of pretty pictures. I'm going to leave it to dry and uh, I'm going to give it a sealant spray, okay? That's the only thing I'm going to do. And when I give it a sealant spray, if I see there's any little bits that are missing, the flock that's on this paper, I'll sprinkle that on. And when I sprinkle that on top, I'll give that a sealant spray again, just to seal it up. But, you know, I'll give you some pretty pictures now, guys, and then I'll be back to you in a second. Right, so here we are. Now, you'll see, it's actually on plimps. So, any any flock's going to fall to the paper. Now, this is what I'm talking about the, with the cunt folds underneath. Okay, you come down to this eye level. So, you can see it's different heights. Yeah, same one here. You see it up here? Okay. Now, there's no PVA glue here, but that's just rested there in okay, the flock. So what we'll do with that, when I spray that with sealant, that's going to stay there. In these little gaps as well. Yeah. All along here. Now, there's a few, a few bits that look a bit thin for my liking. 
yeah like this corner here okay but when that's dry and I give it a sealant spray I could even go with the uh, four mil if I wanted to I just grab a four mil so you can see it that is that's four mil okay a four mil is a lot more it looks more like um, iron wool yeah it's a lot more thicker a lot more bigger but that's that's still another one to go with that I can go with afterwards or I can do that selective here and there but anyway guys I'll see you in a second so that's it now some of you are gonna say to me John but you never showed us how to start with the expanding foam heel to get the expanding foam lump that I had at the beginning when you're doing your expanding foam you just do a blob okay zigzag it circle it whatever just do a blob and it'll expand that into mad look directions and then you cut and shape it as where you need it that's how you get that initial blob say with the crystal with the uh, you know crystalline structure i can't reach it from now <laughs> it said over there i was going to bring it you know what screw it let me reach you <laughs> same with this yeah on the last video this again is the same thing as the blob it expands outwards okay so as it stands now guys we hit the fake subscribers coming into march there's two pieces of train that are up for grabs yeah i'm not going to give both away i'm going to give one of them away but the lucky winner will tell me which one they want so um guys if you enjoyed this video please hit like share subscribe and turn your notifications um this will probably go up with the weekly wednesday because i'm so close to wednesday and i've got to do that as well so Guys, I'll see you next time. Take it easy.